Hey, how's it going? This is Keith Townsend, and you, I'm going to get it right, at least this time, Pisker. There you go. My co-CTO advisor for today at VMworld 2019, we're in the suites at the beautiful St. Regis, right across the street from the conference. You, it's been a heck of a show today. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. a lot of Kubernetes. Yeah, a lot of Kubernetes. Yeah, we talk Kubernetes all the time. And we are not going to let you down. We're going to talk more Kubernetes in a minute with our guest, Diane Gonzalez, who's been on the show. If you remember, we did the show at HPE Discover, and we talked about the Google Anthos announcement with Google and HPE. We're going to do a little bit more of a technical deep dive, but talk about HPE's DHCI. You talked about DHCI earlier today. How did that conversation yeah. go? Yeah, I mean, we, we talked DHCI. Um, you know, basically we talked about, you know, greenfield customers, brownfield customers. Um, where does the DHCI come in? How does it work technically? Um, and kind of how do you transition from having on-prem to, you know, towards the cloud? Mm -hmm. And not entirely going into the cloud directly. I mean, customers do have existing investments. They have you know, existing applications running. So how do you kind of leverage that and go and try out the cloud, you know, step by step, very slowly to get used to it and, and to maximize your investments? So if you watched the video with Diane a couple of months ago, there was no easing into the cloud. This was a cloud discussion at HP Discover. So I'm glad to have her on because she's going to whiteboard for us or lightboard for us the conversation around DHCI and extending DHCI into the cloud. Diane, tell us about this amazing solution. Yeah, no problem, Chief. So when we're talking about extending DHCI into the cloud, let's start there. It's actually a fantastic, a fantastic point to start uh, when we're talking about our true hybrid cloud solution for containers. Uh, what we're talking about is, let's start by describing DHCI. DHCI is our next-gen converged solution, and it allows us to scale compute and storage independently instead of in a modular format as with traditional HCI, HCI solutions. However, while we've added this flexibility to the solution, it is managed as a hyper-converged solution, meaning all the components here are managed by these fields and our plugins. So, should we need to scale compute or add more hypervisors, we simply add the nodes to vSphere. Should we need to deploy or provision more storage or add capacity, either create new VMFS data stores or manage our vVols, again, we do it through vSphere. So we've added the flexibility of converged infrastructure, which is why it's our next-gen converged infrastructure, but we've kept the simplicity of the hyper-converged experience. And what this allows us to do is ensure that we have an infrastructure as a service experience on premises. Now, because it's nimble storage on the back end, we are able to provide a consistent set of APIs and a data path for integration into the cloud. And that's through cloud volumes. Now, this data path is completely integrated into the storage system. There's no external data mover. This is simple replication that is built into Nimble OS. So any data that we have running in our infrastructure here, we're able to take to cloud volumes. And from cloud volumes, we can then present the data to any of the hyperscalers, whether AWS, Azure, or Google. So that's the short answer on how we extend the HCI into the cloud. But the powerful story here, and this is what we uh, announced starting at Google Next this year, is our partnership with Google. And with this partnership, what we have done is we have uh, built a true hybrid cloud experience for containers. It starts with DHCI and our validated design for DHCI, and it's leveraging Google Cloud Anthos. Google Cloud Anthos gives us a platform for our container, containerized applications. We can think of Google Cloud Anthos as an umbrella of services. One of them, and this is the big 
announcement is the ability to run GKE on-premises. It also has integration with Marketplace. Uh, it has a, a service mesh, a synchronization service, and a few other things that allow you to truly take any pods or any applications that you're running in your on-premises environment and seamlessly integrate them into the cloud. And it's all through the same container runtime experience. Now, if we combine Google Kubernetes Engine on-premises with our DHCI solution, that's our validated design for Google Anthos on-premises with DHCI. We now have the ability to have containers as a service or applications as a service as part of our solution. And here's the best part. We can still run our traditional applications on DHCI. So now we've unlocked a myriad of workflows. We're still looking at just the on-premises side here. But let's talk about this. Now we're able to do, for example, lift and shift or modernizing our applications on the same infrastructure, on premises, where we still have all our protections, our governance, our SLAs in place. So simply put, we're able to take our monolithic or our traditional applications that may be running in the same platform and modernize them in place uh, and build cloud native on premises. That's the real beauty of this GK on-premises solution is that it brings the cloud to us. Now, one of the other things that you can do with Google Anthos is that you get a consistent management plane for your Kubernetes infrastructure. And it's not just GK on GCP. You can also manage AKS and EKS. So now, if we combine cloud volumes as the data path, starting from the bottom up, we've got DHCI, which has nimble storage on the back end. That gives us our, our native APIs and our data path to cloud volumes. Take this infrastructure as the next level up, our automation for our APIs and our management plane for containers, and that's provided to us by our partnership with Google, right? What we've essentially done is we've unlocked even more workflows, hybrid workflows or cloud native workflows. And this is why we call it a true hybrid cloud experience. Because not only can we take applications from on-premises to the cloud, but we can take them from the cloud back on-premises. Now, the reason why we are able to provide uh, such a robust solution is because we're not only able to move the application pods, draw a couple pods here, symbolic of the containers, but we're also able to move the data so when we talk about containerized workloads, oftentimes we talk about them in an ephemeral sense. Should this container go down, all the data that's within it also goes down. Okay, you just spin another one back up and off you go. But now what happens if your container actually requires data? Should this container go down, you don't want that data to go down. The beautiful part here is that we are able to manage storage for our persistent or, or for our persistent uh, uh, data sets, our stateful applications, seamlessly through a developer experience, meaning the creation of the volumes, uh, the management, the cloning, the enterprise data uh, kind of experience that you expect from an enterprise storage array, that is all governed or controlled through a spec. So just a YAML specification. And we're able to provide that interface or, or that integration with our Flex Volume plugin, as well as CSI. So what does that mean? Now we're only, not only able to create our applications with persistent data on-premises, but now we're able to move that data and present it wherever we require it to be. So imagine production pods running on-premises, hybrid CI-CD pipeline. Or Imagine being able to choose the best of three cloud to fit your development or your production needs, whether that be because uh, you require certain APIs, maybe there's a price point that you like in the cloud. But the key here is that it is an extremely flexible platform built on Nimble Storage DHCI, cloud volumes, and Google Anthos, and it is a true hybrid cloud solution for containerized applications. So I know this is a sponsored CTO dose, but We'd love to hear your feedback. This will get posted to YouTube, Twitter, etc. Both I and you, Ben, Diane, are all on Twitter. Tell us what do you think? Is this 
a legit path for on-prem managing workloads on-prem and development processes yep. on-prem to extend it to the cloud. Love to hear the feedback. Until the next CTO Dose, you can follow us on the web, thectoadvisor.com. Follow the hashtag, hashtag CTO Dose to join the conversation.